Hey, waiting for everyone to come on up in the room. Hey, Sarah, what's going on? If you are um, on the live on Instagram, please do note that I am actually streaming live on YouTube. So if you want to see the actual presentation and content for today, it'd be best if you hop on over and come to YouTube. But you're more than welcome to stay here because I'm going to be on Instagram live for the amount of time that I'm on YouTube. But just in case you wanted to uh, know the information, please do go ahead and hop on over to YouTube. And welcome, welcome. Waiting for everyone to come on into the room. So give me a second before you, tune, you choose to tap out. Stay on in here with me. And we're going to make a do to do today. We're going to talk about heart health. I'm going to answer some questions as much as I can, as much as long as I can see them. Let me go ahead and get this set up right. Hold on. Trying to make sure you guys can see me. Good, good. Can you see me good, good on here? Sarah, let me know if you can see and hear me good. I know it's probably like rush hour and it is probably a happy hour somewhere in the neck of the woods, but make sure y'all go on and tap on in. And I'm going to need some more people to come on here before I start getting active and live with this information I came to share with you guys. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Happy Wellness Wednesday. So I am going to be sharing my screen with you guys today i've actually figured out how to share the screen on this restream so um, bear with me if i'm having any technical difficulties and please don't judge all right so we'll let people come in and fall in as they please so glad to have your ass back in chemistry class welcome welcome back class to all my new followers my neurotics that have been hanging in there with me from day one or whether or not you started yesterday or today Welcome, glad to have you guys. So today, like I said, we are going to be talking about heart disease. February is Heart Disease Awareness Month. I guess that kind of is funny how V-Day is actually in this month as well. So we're gonna talk about the heart and not the one that you break by love. We're actually talking about the one that can be a risk factor to heart disease. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and we're actually going to get started. So, okay, let me go on over here. Bust down on your future baby mom. Ah, okay. We're sharing. Hope that you guys can see that. All right, so we're sharing. I just hate to have to repeat information over and over again for the people who are in here, if anyone is in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Wait till some more people come on in so we can go ahead and get started. Now, stop playing these games with me. Hold on now, people. I ain't got the patience. I ain't got the patience. What's down on your future, baby mom? Gonna have some people come on in here just in case they forgot to join us today. Hey, what's going on? We're going to get started shortly. I'm sending out some invites, letting people know that I'm actually on here. So give me one second. I guess this is what you need, like someone to help you because I'm really in hands on deck, on deck, on deck.
Okay. So as I said, if you're in here and you want to see the content that I'm going to be talking about on today's uh, lecture, please do go ahead and follow over at YouTube. So YouTube is going to give you guys the actual discussion. Let's see if anyone's picked up in here. All right, without further ado, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So today's uh, lecture is on cholesterol impacts on heart health. Like I said, it is February. This is Heart Disease Awareness Month. So we are going to make sure that you are aware of those contributors and risk factors because we want you to guard your heart at all costs. We don't want you to break it. We don't want you to have to get a new one. We don't want you to have to lose the one that you have. So we're going to help you protect it. So without further ado, we will go into this. So the ugly truth, what's the ugly truth? The number one leading cause of death in the United States is heart disease. And I'm going to quote you facts that stated by the CDC as of right now. So as of right now, up until 2019, welcome on in Desiree. Hello. I am also streaming on YouTube live if you want to see the content. So up until 2019, heart disease has always been the leading cause of death in the United States. Now, the vid came through like bam in 2020, and now it's the CDC is stating that it is now the leading cause of death for 2020. But if you've been following me, you are a follower of chemistry class, you are a follower of my content. You know, I am only going to state what I truly believe can be scientifically proven and that um, metrics that were inflated. So we know that the vid metrics were inflated when we talked about the causes of death. I won't get into how it was inflated, but they were inflated. So I do not believe that the vid is the number one cause of death in 2020. So I am going to continue to discuss the number one leading cause of death uh, being heart disease in the United States. I digress. So common heart disease or cardiovascular disease. We have atherosclerosis, not the arthritis, arthritis. This is something different, totally different, atherosclerosis leads to heart disease. It's when a waxy substance called plaque builds up in your arteries, causing disruption in the blood flow, right? And if the if a blood clot forms, the plaque can block the blood flow, equaling a heart attack or a stroke. So if you ever know someone to have a heart attack or a stroke, right, they may feel this angina, which is called like the pain they have right here in their chest. You may see someone holding like this portion of their chest because it actually hurts because they're not getting the right proper oxygen to go to the, go to the heart, right? So what happens is that what I just discussed, that wa it's a waxy substance called plaque, we'll talk about further, builds up in your arteries, right? And causes the disruption of the blood, the blood to continuously flow like it should be through the arteries, right? So now you've got plaque coming in and it's taking the, it's taking much, much, much uh, different type of energy to go ahead and let that blood go ahead and flow through. So it's, it's a blockage. So because of that blockage, you can have a heart attack or a stroke. Another type of common heart disease, a stroke, which is damage to the brain due by the blood supply, disruption, and blood vessels to the brain. It's also blockage usually caused from a blood clot. So if you've ever known someone to have a stroke, let's say you might see the right side of their face or the right side of their body go through some type of uh, physical change, right, due to a stroke. That means that the stroke has actually happened on the left side of the brain. So whatever side of the brain that the stroke actually occurs, the body is going to uh, manifest that physically on the opposite side. So coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease is going to affect the, specifically the heart muscle. So it's when the oxygenated blood flow to the heart is blocked or reduced. So we get oxygenated blood that flows through the lungs, right? It's going to go through the rest of the body. That heart, that blood that's flowing, supposed to be flowing to the heart is now blocked or reduced. That can be reduced or blocked 
by high levels of low density lipoprotein cholesterol. We'll talk about that further. LDL cholesterol, which is known as bad cholesterol. So your bad cholesterol is high and this can lead to coronary heart disease. Also high blood pressure can lead to coronary heart disease. A heart attack, as we discussed above, blood flow to the part of the heart is blocked by a blood clot. So let me see if I can actually show you guys this simulation of a heart attack now. Bear, bear with me. Let's see. Application window. Sharing. Let's see if we can do this. It should share on the screen, right? Hopefully you guys can see this. So here goes a heart attack simulation. If you were actually looking at the, the simulation, you will see that the heart was overworking, actually trying to make sure that there, there is, it's receiving oxygenated blood. So I just want to give you a simulation. So cholesterol, that's kind of like the topic of what we're going to be discussing today is what I tapped on in um, Mad Scientist Monday. So let's get to it and tap into it. Comes from animal sources. It's in all animal tissue. This graphic that you're seeing to the right of the screen is actually the, the chemical composition of cholesterol. You'll see that below, just a little nerd note, just a little chemistry, you'll see that one of the carbon chains at, towards the bottom has an OH on it, which signifies that there is an alcohol present, right? So cholesterol is called a sterol, meaning that there is an alcohol present. It's actually a steroid, it synthesizes different types of steroid hormones like your, sorry, your estrogen, your testosterone, other ones that mentioned, but specifically I wanted to talk about those specific that you would probably know about. So estrogen and testosterone. All right, like stop hating on me right now. Instagram is like giving me some problems. My phone is giving me some problems. Okay, Instagram, sorry. It also uh, synthesizes vitamin D. So very important when it comes to vitamin D synthesis, a uh, release from the adrenal gland, mostly formed in the liver. It can also be formed in intestines and other places, but mostly in the liver. It's a component of your cell membrane and bile. So cholesterol is already in our bodies. It's already in our bodies as a component of the cell membrane and as a bile. So the cholesterol, which is called endogenous cholesterol, which we have in our bodies, is going to be different from the uh, cholesterol that we receive from the outside of our bodies from different animal sources. If you um, eat animals. So plaque, when we talked about that, what builds up in the arteries and has that blockage, it's, plaque is actually fatty deposits. It's made up of cholesterol. So take away message of plaque, fatty deposits made up of cholesterol. It's made up of other things. It's made up of other things like calcium, which calcifies and calcium salts. It actually becomes a hardened as well as a cholesterol. Fatty substances, waste, and other things. But what you want to know, take home message, cholesterol is the plaque of fatty deposit that builds up in the arteries. So too much low density lipoprotein, your bad cholesterol can cause cholesterol in the artery walls to form a plaque, like we just discussed. This is what you'll start to see when you start to, someone starts to form a heart disease. If someone has a stroke, if someone has a heart attack, they have atherosclerosis. So high levels of cholesterol raises the blood levels of your bad cholesterol. So when you ever go to the doctor and you go ahead and you get a, a blood panel and they say, well, we want to do a total serum on your cholesterol. They're going to, you're going to get your 
bad cholesterol, your good cholesterol, and your triglycerides. They're going to give you a total cholesterol count. When you go and you get this process done, you do not want to have high levels of your bad cholesterol, which is your LDL. That's a significant risk factor for heart disease. Excuse me. And how can you lower that? We'll talk about that further, but you want to watch what you're eating. Of course, as always, that's always my message. Watch what you're eating. And there's also a negative correlation between vitamin D and low density lipoproteins, which is your bad cholesterol. So if you have a lots of high bad cholesterol, you're more than likely going to have low vitamin D. So if you go into the doctor and they tell you that you have low vitamin D, I would be uh, curious to know what your total cholesterol, total cholesterol serum levels look like. So I'm also going to share another animation with you guys, so bear with me. So I want to show you guys a photo or image of what I'm talking about when I say the actual plaque or that waxy orange yellowish substance, if you're looking at the screen on YouTube, what it actually looks like. So plaques forms when cholesterol, which is in that yellow, lodges into the wall of the artery. So if you, if you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so this is your artery, right, which is going to be a little much smaller. And right in that underlying right here is where the plaque will start to build. And as it starts to build and form more, the wall is going to begin to rise, which is going to make blood flow very much harder to get through there. And then if it so happens for it to bust and create blood clots, you got a problem. So let's look at the animation of cholesterol. It's going to be really quick, I believe, less than 30 seconds. And sorry for Instagram if you are watching me right now on Instagram because you're unable to see this animation. Well, actually, I'm unable to see it right now, too. So give me a second because I don't know what that is about. Oh, don't do that. Don't hate on me like that. Okay. Let's call it audible and let's see if I can show you guys this animation real quick from another screen. Hold on now. Hold on to your knickers, girls. All right, let's see if I can share this screen. Give me one second. Let's see if I can share this with you guys. Application window Chrome tab. Okay. All right, you should be able to see it now. Oh, all right, here we go. Wrong one, we've already watched that. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay, so we can stop sharing this screen. We'll go back to the other screen. But if you are watching over there on YouTube, then you were able to see that real quick, that real animation of how cholesterol works. But let's continue. So the ugly history. And I'm not making this up. This is what um, is coming from our predominantly white institutes known as such as Harvard Medical School. So and this is a quotation, an egg a day does not increase your risk of heart attack, a stroke, or any other type of cardiovascular disease. No more than three eggs per week is wise if you have diabetes or are at high risk for heart disease from other causes such as smoking 
or already have heart disease. So what history has told us in the past and what Harvard Medical School is saying is that, welcome on in, what Harvard Medical School is saying is that an egg a day does not increase your risk of heart attack. Okay, remember that takeaway message, an egg a day does not increase your risk of heart attack or stroke or any other type of cardiovascular disease. No more than three eggs per week is wise if you have diabetes or a high risk for heart disease or already have or already have heart disease. This is what Harvard Medical School is saying. This is what this is what we were taught in the past when it comes to science of eggs. But now we know otherwise, and when you know better, you do better, right? So I'm going to tell you about doing better. So intake. Uh, on my screen for YouTube, if you're looking up at me on the Instagram page, I'm actually looking at eggs. I'm about to tell you guys what actually it contains. So if you want to head over to YouTube to see the actual content, you can, because I'm actually screen sharing from the computer. So intake. Egg contains, and, and um, shout out to those who stay online. If you stay online, I have a little surprise for you guys towards the end. So please do stay online. So intake. Egg contains at least 186 milligrams of cholesterol, right? So 300 milligrams is what the recommended dairy, I mean dietary allowance or intake by the USDA uh, dietary guideline. They're saying that this is how much cholesterol you can have a day. Is that 300 milligrams? So if one egg, just one, because who who is eating just one egg? You're eating more than one egg. You're probably eating two or three eggs in the morning if you're eating them for breakfast. No, I don't know no one that just eating one egg. Even when I ate eggs, I wouldn't just eat one egg. I would eat like two eggs, sometimes three eggs in the morning. So one egg equals 186 milligrams of cholesterol. Your dietary intake or allowance is at 300 milligrams. So eating one egg equates to 62% of your cholesterol intake for that day. So once you eat one egg, you're already at 62% of your cholesterol intake. So that's not including the bacon you may eat. That's not including the deli meat you may eat on your sandwich. That's not including the fried chicken you may have or the broiled chicken or the baked chicken. That's not including the steak you may have for the day. That's not including nothing else. So at breakfast, let's just say you're eating an egg at breakfast. At breakfast, you're already at, for one egg, you're already at 62%. Now double that if you're at two eggs. You're already over your 30, 300 milligram cholesterol uh, allowance. So, also, nerd note, nerd note, eggs can yield anaphylactic shock, which means that there is a life threatening uh, risk for as far as an allergy when someone has an anaphylactic shock, right? So, people can be highly allergic to eggs. If you're highly allergic to eggs, I would suggest not eating those, but you probably already know that because it can send you into anaphylactic shock. So let's visit what we said. I said on Monday, right? On Mad Scientist Monday, I said on Mythbusters Monday, I said that um, the cholesterol eggs have a healthy impact on your heart health, which I should have said correction. Cholesterol eggs have a positive impact on your heart health. I said that's false. I say it's false for uh, this being the reason why it's false, right? Let's break this down. And this information is not even coming from me, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Published in a health article in 2019, just half an egg a day was linked to a 6 to 8% increased risk of having a heart attack, stroke, or early death over the course of the study compared to someone who didn't eat eggs. This is in a study. I'm not making it up. So those who average two eggs every day had a 24% increased risk of heart-related events. And I'm not here to scare those who are following me, those who are tuned into the live right now. I'm not here to scare you if you eat eggs. If you eat eggs, you eat eggs. I'm just here to give you the information. You, you, it's your choice to do with it as you will. But I just want you to know that cholesterol, which is in eggs, is not good for your heart health. Now, it may be good to taste. You may say it's a, a better source of your protein, but it's really not good for your heart health. But I mean, you do with that as you want, right? I, I wouldn't suggest that anything that comes from an animal is good for your heart health because that's going to make it very acidic. And what does that do? Cause inflammation. So I said that's false. The cholesterol eggs have a positive impact on your heart health. False. Not only do I believe that it's false based upon my scientific knowledge or expertise, 
not only that, there are studies that are also coming out saying that this, this is also uh, not true. But what Harvard Medical School and what others have told us in the past is go ahead and substitute your protein in the morning, get you some eggs, eat you some egg whites, don't eat the yolk, all that good old stuff. Eggs ain't good for your heart, okay? So I've talked about low-density lipoproteins, which is your bad cholesterol. Remember class, LDL, bad cholesterol. But I am remiss, and I cannot have a discussion or lecture without talking about the HDL. Because for every high, there's a low, right? For every up, there's a down. So we got to talk about the opposite. Your high-density lipoprotein, or your HDL, is your good cholesterol, right? This is what you... What we're taught that you want to have, right? Your body should have this. So HDL, your good cholesterol, removes the extra cholesterol and plaque buildup in the arteries. It sends it. What it does is by mechanism, it sends it back to the liver where it's degraded into bowel acids and the liver then eliminates it. Okay? Hey, Shayla. And then the liver eliminates it. Now, this biomechanism reduces heart disease. So when we think about heart disease and when we're thinking about fats or saturated fat, unsaturated fat, we're thinking about uh, omega-3, omega-6. What we want to be thinking about when it comes to cholesterol is that you want an inverse reaction. You want high HDL, which is your good cholesterol, and you want bad LDL, which is your uh you want low LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, okay? So that's what you want. So inverse reaction, high HDL, low LDL. So LDL transports cholesterol from the liver to the bloodstream. Welcome, 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 everyone that's coming on in. If you're watching right now on Instagram, know that I am actually live on YouTube. I'm going to take questions afterwards, and you're able to see the content that I'm reading from right now. So on Instagram, you just hear me talking, blah, 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 blah. But if you want to see actual images and animations, tune on over to the YouTube. So LDL, your bad cholesterol, transports from the liver to the bloodstream. And this is where the accumulation of cholesterol happens. So with your bad cholesterol, it's going to be transported from the liver straight into the bloodstream, right? And it's going to accumulate cholesterol. Now, when I talked about your good cholesterol, right, I said that it's sent back to the liver, degraded into bile acid, just say degraded into something else, and then the liver eliminates it, right? That's the process for your good cholesterol. However, your bad cholesterol is going to start go to the bloodstream. That's where it's going to start to accumulate. That's where you start to see it build up in your arteries. So if anything, if you remember anything from today, you know that bad cholesterol is bad for your heart. So sources, people want to know, people always ask me, what, what can I eat or what can I not eat? that are in these categories that I'm specifically talking about. And being a nutrition educator, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you guys what you can eat or what you should not eat. Again, I'm just here to give you the information. Don't shoot the messenger. So LDL, which is, what is LDL class? I, if someone in here, someone in here, please let me know. Thanks, Unc. What LDL is? If you're on my Instagram channel or if you're on uh, YouTube. Let me know real quick. I want to know if you're paying attention, if you're watching. I want to know if you're actively listening, okay? So I'm going to take some time real quick, and I want to know if you guys if you guys know exactly what, what I'm talking about, what I've been talking about up here for the last 30 minutes. Okay, ain't nobody going to tell me. Don't nobody know what LDL is in here? Somebody know. Don't let me call on nobody. Shayla, you just tapped in. Bad cholesterol. Thank you, Unc. You've been listening. Thank you. All right. So let's move on. So LDL, saturated, saturated uh, fats, right? Comes from butter, cream, cheese, bacon, sausage, 
low density something. <laughs> yes, that's correct. That's right. It is your low density lipoprotein, also referred to as your bad cholesterol. So LDL, saturated, right? Saturated fats, such as butter, cream cheese, bacon, sausage, lard, shortening, margarine. A large shortening of margarine are trans fats, right? You don't want to eat those either. Those are like nasty. The chemistry in there, the, the bonds is nasty, right? So part of the Food and Drug Administration, hydrogenated oils, which is also known as PHOs, all you need to know about that is that these are trans fat that are processed in the manufacturing process of food. So that's how you get these PHOs. You don't want to actually be eating those either. However, as of June 18, 2018, the FDA said, after this date, you can't no longer manufacture anything with PHOs. So we don't want those in our foods because they're bad for our heart health. They're bad for our health. We don't want those no more. So if you're seeing anything with partially hydrogenated oils, um, don't eat it. But definitely you probably want to contact the FDA. So LDL, bad HDL. What can what, what are the sources where we can get a high density lipoproteins or our good cholesterol? Well, I'm glad you asked, class. Olive oil. Everyone out there knows. I'll check back in later. Okay, thanks, Unc. So olive oil, go to, right? High unsaturated fat, lowers your bad cholesterol. Avocados, beans. Legumes, high fiber fruits such as prunes, apples, pears, fat, uh, fish high in fatty acids such as omega-3 or omega-3 fatty acids, uh, also known as EPA, such as wild salmon, mackerel, sardines, rainbow trout. We have albacore tuna for those that eat seafood. Uh, nuts, also high in saturated fats. Another uh, omega three, I mean, another fatty acid such as omega omega six fatty acid are polyunsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats are also good in protecting against heart disease. They can be found in oils and seeds. They lower the risk of stroke and heart disease. Where can you find those? Such as like your grapeseed oil, any type of oil from seeds. We also have nuts. We have walnuts. We have hemp seeds. These are just to name a few of the sources that you can find your good cholesterol and where you can find your bad cholesterol, which you want to stay away from. And we, I know, as especially as a black person, that when we cook in our households, we like to cook with butter. We like to put the cream cheese on, you know, the bagels. We like to eat our bacon, our sausage at breakfast. I don't know so much about anybody using lard or shortening. I think that's like some old school shindig, but um, margarine. These are all the things that are contribute to your bad cholesterol. However, I know that uh, changing dietary behaviors takes at least between 30 to 90 days. So do as you will with the information. Don't shoot the messenger. Nerd note. I'm actually saying nerd note. Nerd note. Nerd note. Oils and fish, such as omega-3, decreases inflammation, particularly in the heart. If you've been listening to me, you know that I am a firm believer in what uh, our great Dr. Sebi teaches us, that all disease comes from inflammation. All disease comes from inflammation, right? So when you have heart disease, that's the inflammation revolving around what? The actual heart. And what how can you get the inflammation around your actual heart cholesterol is one of the main ways fats are fats are in other ways but cholesterol is a fatty like substance so that substance causes inflammation now nerd note the pharmaceutical similar mechanism of action found in aspirin is the same of which you would see that you the action you would get from omega-3 now, I am not a proponent of taking pharmaceuticals, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that if you're having a, a heart event or heart, you're, you're experiencing some type of heart disease or cardiovascular disease, I'm not going to, and you have aspirin on deck, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh my God, don't you take that aspirin. You might want to go fry, you, you might want to go boil you some fish real quick so it'll get you some wild salmon and get some omega-3 from there. No, because you're in a dire you're in a dire need, right? You can be at the point of no return. I'm not going to tell you not to take the aspirin. But what I will tell you is that so that you don't have to get to the point where you're taking aspirin per day to try and prevent heart disease, the best way to do something is going to be to do it how? 
naturally, right? So aspirin is the unnatural way of preventing uh, heart disease or lowering your risk or contributors to heart disease, right? Really to prevent heart disease is going to be natural. It's going to be through food you eat. If you wanted to go a pharmaceutical way, it would be aspirin. So this is why people take aspirin daily. Uh, my parents, I, I think one of them, my mom, maybe possibly. Mom, I'm sorry if I'm putting too much information out there, TMI. But um, yes, yeah, so using food as medicine. Food is the medicine. Food, food is how we heal the body. But you also can hurt the body with food too, depending on what you eat, which is why we're talking about what we're talking about, right? So this is why people take aspirin daily to prevent heart disease and recommend it to take if you're experiencing a heart attack. Like I just said, if someone is experiencing a heart attack, they think they could possibly be having a stroke and they got some aspirin there, the person is more than likely going to give it to them or they're going to take it. I ain't got no woes with that. What I'm telling you guys is that what you want to do is always go the natural route. And that's not, it's not easy. I'm not here to be a, a stickler or a proponent and say that, oh, it's so it's so easy to, to have a lifestyle where you basically don't eat nothing, right? Well, that's what people think. Because a lot of my line sisters and friends clown me about, oh, you just eat air and grass. Actually, I eat very well, but I can't sit and lie to you guys and say that I don't miss eating certain things. I do, but I just know that I have dedication and I know that where that road will lead me to. Not everybody gets there at the same point in time, right? But I'm going to help you guys get there at some point in time in your life. You know, and whether that takes me all my life, that's what I got. I'm here for you. So, tip of the day. Lifestyle changes reduces the risk of heart disease. So, we like we just said, changing dietary habits, exercise, reducing and eliminate cigarette smoking, reducing obesity, <laughs> uh, eliminating diabetes type 2. Excuse me, because diabetes type 2, that, that, the high... Uh, that can also damage the blood vessel. So that's how it is a contributor to heart disease. And inflammation, like I said, inflammation is where the manifestation of disease begins. So what we put into our body is how inflammation manifests. So if what we put into our body manifests disease and inflammation, we have the control to change that. So when you have the control to change it, you do so. Or else you'll end up maybe at a point of no return where you're waiting on someone to help you, assist you to live, whether that be a ventilator, whether it be whatever it is, whether it be pharmaceuticals, you don't want assistance of living because that's really not living right. You want to live and it's hard to do that. I know, I know. I know y'all like, Brittany, it's not that easy. I know it's not that easy, but take it one step at a time and I promise you'll get there to reach a goal. Set a goal, set a goal today and check back in in 30 days and see how you're doing with that goal. So a go-to that I love, a go-to, okay? When I'm talking about food, I always have to mention the herbs. I always gotta go to the herbs and the spices, right? So a go-to that I use for heart disease or any type of heart elements is gonna be hawthorn berry. If anybody has ever heard of hawthorn berry or if you haven't heard of hawthorn berry, that's going to be something you want to go ahead and put in your pantry or your medicine cabinet. My medicine cabinet is in my is in my uh, kitchen because that's where the medicine is, the kitchen, the food. So hawthorn berry. Also, you have cayenne pepper, which is good for circulatory system, keeping that blood flowing, reishi, mushroom, and coriander. I have spices that have cayenne pepper and coriander in them. Not yet, Reese Mushroom. I uh, haven't ventured there yet. But if you can see, I have some of the products over here, which is what we're going to talk about in a second. So that is actually the end of the lecture today. So thank you guys for listening to the lecture. However, I did say that if you hung around, I had some special things to discuss with you. So if you're in here, thanks for joining. So if you're in here, stick around because some of these products may be beneficial. Not, they are beneficial for your heart because they have those some of those spices that I just mentioned, but they definitely are good in the kitchen. So this right here is the, well, let me specifically talk about the ones we just talked about, jumping the gun, hello. So this right here is my 24 karat, 
24 karat not curry seasoning. So this will be my curry replacement, right? So if you ever want to know any of the products that I have, you can find them on healthneurotics.com slash shop. If you're following me on Instagram, you can go ahead and look at the link in the bio and you can get to there off of my link tree. So the 24 karat not curry has cayenne pepper in there. Okay. So we said cayenne pepper is good for the circulation, especially good for your heart. And the Fiesta Fiesta that actually has cayenne pepper and the coriander in there, which we said is good for heart health. And then we have over here, we have our not garlic, which just has ginger, dill weed, and onion powder in there. That was specifically discussed today in heart health, but I'm just trying to show you all three of the seasonings, all three of the spices. And then what we do have for the people who love spice like I do, this has cayenne pepper in it as well. And the cayenne pepper in here is more potent than what you would find in the seasonings for a reason, because this is habanero heat. It's very spicy. We know that spice is good for what? Heart health. No garlic. Okay, so I have a question. So birthing code, you said no garlic. So no, this is not garlic. And when I say not garlic, that means there is no garlic in here. So no, I do not subscribe to garlic. Why? Because it's very acidic and it is a hybrid. So no, I do not eat garlic. But if you wanted to follow along with the Dr. Sebi uh, alkaline lifestyle, you wouldn't be eating garlic. So if you're looking for a substitute or a swap out, I have not garlic for you. If you want to stick with your garlic, please do so. But if you ever want to try what I got going on over here, go to healthneurologist.com slash shop. Also, I want to show some other products. If you don't know, if you don't know what's good, now you do. This is the best tea in the DMV. When I say DMV, I'm from DC. The region, as people know, outside DC, is called the DMV. But this is the best tea around. And I am in the works of getting this shipping, at least, at least along the northeast region of the world. Also, I have my good old alkaline vegan cookbook learning how to cook the dr savey way and for people who are still watching if you purchase the cookbook or you purchase a tea if you're local for local pickup if you purchase a hot sauce along with any one of the spices i am definitely going to give you a, a giveaway today and one of the giveaways is a beaker because I am a scientist, as you can see, a chemist. I'm going to give away a beaker, which can be used for mixing in the kitchen. It is uh, eight ounces in measurement, mixing in the kitchen, and also used for hot and cold beverages, okay? Thank you, Shayla. So what happened was that I ordered these to have vinyls printed on them, but I do not like these vinyls. So thanks, Des. I do not like the vinyl sticker, so I'm going to be giving away um, giving away some of these beakers to those who purchase anything in store. And basically, if you purchase a cookbook or you're purchasing some tea for local pickup or you're purchasing a hot sauce along with a spice, you will have a giveaway of the beaker. And this is a health and a rock speaker. So you can mix in the kitchen like a chemist. You can be cooking like a chemist, or you can actually use this as a drinking glass. Okay, so we have ones without a decal, and we have the ones with a decal. I don't particularly like the decal if you guys can see it, but I mean if you can see it, because it's not thresh, it's not thresh to here, so I really don't like that. But if you guys like it, I am more than willing to give you. Give you a free one if you order anything in store so thank you for sticking in here as long as you did if anyone has any questions and i'm not sure if i let you guys on youtube see this that i'm going to be giving away the beaker the mixing beaker or drinking beaker you can put hot and cold beverages in here or you can mix in the kitchen like a chemist for eight ounces we have the Fiesta Fiesta taco seasoning that has the cayenne, the coriander in there, good for heart health. We have the 24 karat, not curry, which also has cayenne pepper in here, good for heart health. We have the not garlic uh, spice. That is a substitution or swap out for garlic. 
The 24 not carry not the 24 not curry obviously is a substitution for curry. Uh, if you didn't see these already, then we have the be careful habanero heat hot sauce. This has a potent form of cayenne pepper in there, which we said is good for blood circulation. And then we have our grandma G's herbal tea, which will be hitting the stores near you, I'm pretty sure, perfectly soon. And then we also have, we have other products, but these are a few of our main ones. And then we have the Culture Cooking Cookbook, which is a easy guide to Dr. Sabi, right? And if you go on to Health Neurotics YouTube page, we have a playlist in there for the cookbook, which is called Culture Cooking. So all of the recipes that I did are inspired by either a hip hop song or some type of R&B song. They're also listed for each recipe, but you can go ahead and listen to the playlist actually on YouTube if you go ahead and scroll over to the playlist. Hey, welcome on in here. Do we have any questions for the night? Because I asked if anyone had any questions on Instagram. I didn't get any responses, so I told them that I would read them out loud on the live channel today. So do we have any questions in regards to cholesterol, any, any questions in regards to heart disease. I'm going to be focusing on heart disease. I'm sorry if I'm looking over at the Instagram because there are actually uh, people in here in the room. So if we're focusing on heart disease for the whole month of February, so I will be talking about heart disease. I'll be talking about blood pressure. I'll be talking about cigarette smoking. I'm going to be talking about other uh, contributing factors. So if you missed today, where we talked about cholesterol, no problem. Don't worry that we're going to cover some other topics of heart disease and contributing factors. So if there are not any questions, um, without further ado, I say to you, um, have a great night and make sure to have your ass back in chemistry class. Make sure to have your ass back in chemistry class next week. I love you and toodaloo. Okay, so now that I'm off of the Instagram, because that's where a lot of the people were over there on Instagram following and tapping in today. So if I've been on YouTube, and yeah, you've seen my angle go like this for the most part, that's because I was talking on using a phone to reach the Instagram viewers. However, um, if there's anything, any questions that you do have for me, please make sure that you go ahead and drop a question below. And also you can... Uh, DM me. You can email me. My, all the information is in my link in my bio and my Instagram page if you have any questions or if you would like for me to read your question and answer you live on air next week. So like I said, please have an amazing night and peace. Peace.